Good morning and happy Monday to all. Um, we are going to be starting chapter two, book two of our new book, The Odyssey. Um, just kind of laying out how the week is going to go. So I will post the chapter and this reading um, along with the reading comprehension questions. Wednesday, I will not be having our Google session because I have to be on campus around 1030 in order to do stuff for work. Um, so I cannot be on Google Meets at the same time. Um, so what I plan to do is read through this chapter and do the kind of explanation that I would do if it were Wednesday during the Google Meets. Um, so kind of as I read, go through and kind of break down with explanation for each paragraph or so. Um, so that's my plan. Uh, tomorrow we will, I will be posting the next language arts lesson, which has to do with pronouns. Yay, pronouns. Okay. Um, so book two. Book two is called Telemachus Sets Sail. This is a dramatic chapter. Telemachus is not a happy person. So remember, Telemachus is the son of Odysseus, our main character, and Penelope. So he was from the last chapter, he was ordered by Athena under the guise of a dude to set sail and figure out if Odysseus is alive or not. He is alive. Um, but everyone assumes he's dead because he's been gone for four years, plus the 10 of the Trojan War. So he's been gone for like 14, 15 years. When he left, Telemachus was just a small child, um, and now he's a man. Um, so, like I said, Telemachus was ordered by Athena to A, get rid of the suitors, and B, find word of whether his father is alive or not, even though she knows that he is. But the gods and goddesses weren't allowed to firsthand interfere like she couldn't have showed up looking like Athena she had to show up under disguise because you're really not supposed to interfere with the world with the actions and lives of men and women humans really okay so Telemachus sets sail when young dawn with her red with her rose red fingers shone once more the true son of Odysseus sprang from bed and dressed. At once he summoned the flowing-haired Achaeans to full assembly. Athena lavished a marvelous splendor on the prince, so the people all gazed in wonder as he came forward, the elders making way as he took his father's seat. Aegyptius stood with age, knew the world by heart, for one dear son had sailed with Odysseus but killed by the brutal Cyclops. In tears he rose and said, Hear me, men of Ithaca. Not once have we held assembly, met in session, since King Odysseus sailed away in the hollow ships. Who has summoned us now? So essentially, a bunch of dudes from Ithaca um, are meeting, and they hadn't really met since King Odysseus was gone because there is no king to call this group meeting. Um, so they're in a group, they're in some section of Ithaca, um, just kind of standing around not knowing why they're there and who brought them together, which we find out is Telemachus. Telemachus said, Sir, I was the one who called us all together, not to warn you of an army on the march or some other public matter. No, this crisis is my own. Trouble has struck my house, a double blow. First, I have lost my noble father, who ruled among you years ago, each of you here, and kindly as a father to his children. But now this, a worse disaster that soon will grind my house down, ruin it all, and all my worldly goods in the bargain. Suitors plague my mother, against her will, sons of the very men who are your finest here. They'd sooner die than approach her father's house, so Icarus himself might see to his daughter's bridal hand her bridal hand her to whom he likes whoever meets his fancy not they they infest our palace day and night they butcher our cattle our sheep our fat goats feasting themselves sick 
swilling our glowing wine as if there's no tomorrow. All of it, squandered. Now we have no man like Odysseus in command to drive these this curse from our house. We ourselves, we were hardly the ones to fight them off. All we do is parade our wretched weakness. A boy inept at battle. Oh, I'd swing to attack if I had the power in me. By God, it's intolerable what they do. Disgrace my house a shambles. Um, so, essentially, what is happening is, usually when a king or a prince calls a bunch of the higher-ups of Ithaca together, it's to say, hey, enemies are coming, hey, war is about to start, something that directly impacts their safety, but that's not the case right now. So Telemachus is just bringing all of these people together, all of the men of power, to kind of win the sympathy vote and get these men who are trying to marry his mother out of his house. Um, so when he said they'd sooner die than approach her father's house so Icarus himself might see to his daughter's bridal. So back during this point, women weren't allowed to just be like, hey, I'm going to marry you because I'm in love with you. They were... Their husbands were selected by their fathers. Um, so what Telemachus is saying is that these guys, these suitors, don't have the courage to go to Icarus and be like, Lord, we would like to marry your daughter. Um, because they have a feeling that Icarus is going to be like, no, none of you are worthy enough for my daughter. She was married to a king. She's not going to just marry you guys. Um, so instead... They are trying to essentially break her down emotionally and she'll just give in one day. Not the greatest tactic. Okay. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Fear the gods' wrath before they wheel in outrage and make these crimes recoil on your heads. I beg you by Olympian Zeus, stop, my friends. Unless, of course, you think my noble father Odysseus did the Achaean army damage, deliberate harm, and to pay me back, you do me harm, deliberately setting these parasites against me. Better for me if you were devouring all my treasures, all my cattle. If you were the ones, we'd make amends in no time. We'd approach you for reparations around the town, demanding our goods till you'd return the lot. But now, look, you load my heart with grief. There's nothing I can do. Um, so he is saying... He is pleading to these townspeople to stop what they're doing um, or to talk the suitors into stopping what they're doing um, by fear of punishment by Zeus, who is the god, the head, head honcho up in Olympia. Um, oh, Olympia? Olympus. Olympia is the restaurant in Parkville. Um... So what he's saying also is that these men who are meeting are much more down to earth that so he's just, he's trying to talk these more rational men into helping him get rid of these suitors. However, among these rational men is one of the suitors, which we will come to. Filled with anger, down to the ground, he dashed the speaker's scepter, bursting into tears. Pity seized the assembly. All just sat there, silent. So, it's going the way... Sorry, my dog is outside barking. It's going the way he was hoping until this next dude stands up. Um, only Antinous, who found it in himself to say, So high and mighty, Telemachus, such unbridled rage. So Antinous is actually one of the suitors. He is the most arrogant of them. He's, he's a jerk. Um, but we will find out that he, he gets what's coming to him. So high and mighty Telemachus, such unbridled rage. Well, now you fling your accusations at us. Think to pin the blame on us. You think again. It's not the suitors here who deserve the blame. It's your own dear mother, the matchless queen of cunning. 
For three years now, getting on to four, she's played it fast and loose with all of our hearts, building each man's hopes, but all the while with something else in her mind. She set up a loom in the royal halls, and she began to weave, and the weaving fine spun, the yarns endless, and she would lead us on. Young men, my suitors, now the king Odysseus is no more, go slowly, keen as you are to marry me, until I finish off this web. So she's saying... She knows that she eventually has to get remarried, but she actually ended up falling in love with Odysseus, which is not always the case when a woman marries a man back then. But Odysseus was good to her. They were in love. They had a son. Um, she doesn't want to marry anyone else because she loves her husband, and there's still that hope that her husband is still alive, even though in her mind it's very slim. So she essentially made it, she made the decree that she would pick a suitor once she was done her looming project. So looming is kind of like sewing. It's like this big wooden contraption. I don't know much about it. Um, so she said, once my project is done, I will pick one of you to marry. But, so, um, Antinous continues, so day by day, she'd weave at her great and growing web, but by night, by the torches set beside her, she would unravel all she'd done. So, whatever work she got done during the day when all the suitors were asleep, she would stay awake and unravel each and every thread of the looming project she had done, so that when they all woke up, she still had a whole bunch to do. So this is just her holding out and stalling so that she doesn't actually have to pick one of these dudes that she doesn't want to marry. So, um, now Telemachus, here is how the suitors answer you. Direct her to marry whomever her father picks, whoever pleases her. So long as she persists in tormenting us, we will devour your worldly goods and wealth as long as she holds out. He's just not a nice man. I don't know why. Yeah, if I were Penelope, I would be doing the same thing. Okay. But with calm good sense, Telemachus replied, Antinous, how can I drive my mother from our house against her will when my dear father is worlds away, dead or alive? Who knows? You must have shame in your own hearts. You must leave my palace. But if you decide the fare is better, richer here, then I hope that Zeus will pay you back with a vengeance. All of you destroyed in my house. So he didn't like go off um, in anger. He was very calm and he said what I just said. Essentially, fine, I'm, I am not going to force my mother into marrying any of you. It's not my place. But if you continue to do what you're doing, I hope that Zeus, God of Olympus, pays you back with what you deserve. All I ask is a good swift ship and crew of 20 men to speed me through my passage out and back. I'm sailing off to Sparta, Sandy Pylos too, for news of my father's long lost journey home. That's the journey that Athena had talked him into doing. Now, if I hear my father's alive and heading home, hard pressed as I am, I'll brave out one more year. If I hear he's dead, no longer among the living, then back I'll come to the native land I love raise his grave mound, build his honors high with the funeral rites that he deserves, and give my mother another husband. So he has a very good sense that his father is alive. So he's saying that if he goes out on this journey, finds out his father is alive, he's going to come back and just wait till his dad comes home and gets rid of everybody. If he finds out he's dead, which he really doesn't think he is, then he will come back prepare all of the things that need to happen for a king who has passed on and then he will make his mother choose a husband the assembly broke up and people scattered quickly telemachus then went back to his house with an aching heart and there at the palace found the brazen suitors Antinous, smiling warmly sauntered up to the prince telemachus come eat and drink with us our people will provide a ship and crew to find your noble father this guy has some goal to essentially dishonor his mother 
in public in front of all of Ithaca and then come back to Odysseus's home and try and be BFF with Telemachus, hoping that Telemachus will talk Penelope into choosing him. It seems just... He's annoying. But self-possessed Telemachus drew the line. Antinous, how could I dine with you and take my peace? You, my mother's suitors, have ravaged it all these many years. While well, I was still a boy, but now I'm a full-grown... But now I'm full grown, and now, yes, anger seethes inside me. I'll stop at nothing to hurl destruction at your heads. The trip I speak of will not end in failure. So, gone is calm, political Telemachus, and now he's like, dude, this is personal. I am not going to be BFF with you. You and these other guys have ruined my mother and my lives for the last however many years. I'm done. I'm going out, I'm going to find out whether my dad is alive, and I'm not going to fail. Telemachus went to town inspired and gave his first commands. Come, friends, get the rations aboard. No one knows our plan. The crew sprang to the orders, rallying around, inspired by the prince and his courage. And Athena heartened every man, sending them a swift following wind, ripping out of the west as the ship went plunging all night long and through the dawn. So, essentially this entire time, Telemachus has had a crew. He's had this plan. He knew he was going to be able to do it whether the Achaeans and the suitors left or not. So, no one really knows where he's going to be. They don't realize that he's already able to do all of the things he needs to do. Um, so, yeah. That is chapter two. Okay. Just wait for the questions. Bye!